<laughs> Hi everybody, Rad Mom here. Welcome back to the garden. Our earthy setting for doing feminism from a materialist perspective. I had this whole Camille Patria thing planned for you guys. I was gonna you know, dissect some of her stuff, but um, I'm so tired. Then I had this day. One of those days where everything you do is like trying to run in knee deep water. One of those days where if you're gonna forget something and have to go back for it, if you're gonna drop something, it's today was the day. Instead, I thought I would just do a little bit of an off the cuff comment on the uh, Bombay et Let's see that algorithm learn Igpe Atenlay. Because I think that this is a really, really, really amazing, probably the best yet, and I hope the best ever example of why exactly it is that we do not want to get tangled up with right wing type folks, okay? Because they're, they're dangerous. Liberals and leftists, socialists tend to, at least in this country, tend to favor nonviolent protest. As silly as the pussy hats may be, okay? They didn't fucking kill anyone, did they? We all remember them. Yeah. I feel like they maybe they got their point across and everybody had a good time. God forbid. The right wing has this certain segment that their go-to move is exploding things. However, I do want to point out, and, and you can go ahead and look this up. I did to double check myself. I'll link the article in the, the description below that I found written by an ex-cop talking about how almost all ombe etres are are bluffs. They're not real. There's no ombe involved. There never was and there was never planned to be. It was just to scare everybody, okay? And the quote that I remember the fellow said was that ombeers ombe they don't make ombe etres. If you're gonna do something like that, you're just gonna do it. You're not gonna warn everybody first. That doesn't make any damn sense. They're, you do that to scare people. The phrase stochastic terrorism has been thrown around. <laughs> As if Matt Walsh, oh, come on. It's been credible in the past, I admit. Oh gosh, there was the, this just occurred to me and I haven't had a chance to look at it. But there was an abortion doctor who was killed because somebody had been going after, you know, the baby killers. One of their listeners went out and shot this guy. That's probably a better example. This guy was, you know, using the sort of rhetoric of we have to stop them at all costs. I have not heard everything Matt Walsh has said on this topic because I find him insufferable. I don't think that this was the charge he had in mind. Mainly because he leans toward the kind of family friendly angle of the whole conservative thing. Not so much right wing nut job as authoritarian father figure. Uh, shades. Your father figure is less likely to shoot you than the militia guy, okay? <laughs> Any, for anybody in my audience who is not American, perhaps you are not aware. Over here in the States is a blisteringly easy to get a firearm. It's the sort of thing where if you have one, it's a lot more likely that you have five. There's some, some very, very scary people over here. I've met a few of them in my meanderings through alternative subcultures. And I'll tell you this, they think they're doing the right thing, which is probably the worst part. If one of these people got themselves ginned up to think they were protecting some children, that could definitely get ugly fast. We don't want to be associated with anyone who has a propensity for violence, which is probably not something I would have pointed out about the right wing a year ago, two years ago, six months ago even, I six weeks ago. But this is the little reminder for us all of just exactly who it is that we're flirting with, we've been flirting with. And I have said from the beginning several years ago when this became an issue, in the Turvin community, that standing next to the conservatives is not a good idea. It's not a good look, because a look is about all we're going to get from most people. A cursory glance is almost people have the time or energy for most of the time, for anything that isn't especially interesting to them. This is true of all of us, so I am not making a ju <laughs> moral judgment here. Optics matter. They say not to judge a book by its cover, but that is the first thing you see. And there should be no confusion if someone actually does blow something up in the name of fighting against transitioning children, there should be 
no doubt in people's minds whether or not the gender critical or grad femme community is in any way involved in any of that shit. In fact, that there would be any fucking doubt in anyone's mind about that is uh, upsetting. So I think it might be time to start boycotting Tucker Carlson. <laughs> it's just a hop, skip, and a jump from Tucker Carlson to the white supremacists to the violent militias. Like, it's a little too incestuous there. They all intermingle with each other, and I just, like, we, we should not be talking to any of these people. I don't think that this person was serious if they catch who it was. It was at least a couple of different hospitals who received these et trays. Boston and Washington, D.C. At least those two did the other day. And we're leaping directly to the conclusion that they've been building to all this time. <laughs> Which is that anyone who opposes transgenderism, transgender ideology, transition, whatever. Like, all the words are just so clunky. That shit. If you don't believe that some people are born in the wrong body and the, the, there's actually quite a few of them out there and they need her help or they will die! You're a right-wing nut job. Along the lines of the Unabomber or Timothy McVeigh. People are ever going to figure out what the fuck leftist actually means and what radical feminism actually means. If we have any hope of ever communicating that to the wider world at large. We cannot allow ourselves to be associated with right-wing nut jobs, with violent extremists of any sort. But, um, it's a lot harder to find someone who actually believes in egalitarian collectivism who tends to resort to physical violence. <laughs> it's just really not our thing. I, you know, we tend to be pacifists. One of my favorite things about us, honestly, it's one of the things that is really one of the telltale signs <laughs> between a right-wing weirdo who has learned to couch his jargon in a bunch of liberal talking points and someone who actually believes in the cause of like equality and shit. How quickly they resort to physical violence. We all know who's been failing that test. We should not have any gunpowder on our hands. We have got to distance ourselves from these people. No more Tucker Carlson. No more Heritage Foundation. No more God who else? You know what? You go ahead and keep on picking on the Pritzkers. Supposedly they're Jewish. I have actually never seen any evidence of this. I haven't looked because I don't care because it does not matter at all. It is irrelevant. Transgenderism and Judaism have never the twain shall meet there, really. The Judaism is pretty big on sex roles. Mm. Anyway, I thought that this was a really good opportunity to reiterate something that I've been saying for years that I think is a very important point that it's easy to lose sight of when everyone who we consider to be on our side politically or socially is shunning us but they're trying to discredit us by lumping us in with the right wing nut jobs let's not do their job for them i think that we should maybe brainstorm some ways to counteract what damage has already been done i'm gonna be thinking about that myself moving forward from this because yeah i definitely hadn't don't support this shit at all the libs of TikTok, they got suspended from Twitter, Ooh. But, but they said that they're going to continue covering this and continue pushing the idea young people are being medicalized in these facilities. And, and I think that the reason for that is that they're onto something, right? <laughs> because lest we lose sight of the forest for the trees, there's quite a bit of evidence from the UK that yes, kids under the age of 18 have been getting hormone treatments and regardless, anti-hormones, puberty blockers, sterilize you because if you don't go through puberty, then you don't have sexual function. So, so even just that, that first thing. Oh, the puberty blockers are totally reversible. No, they're fucking not. You cannot just hit the pause button on a human being. There's reasons to believe I, I, the changing of the websites. There's details here and there. There's reason to believe that they had left the door open to such a thing, which on its own is negligent. If any of this sort of thing has happened, well, those kids are still out there. Someone's bound to come forward sooner or later, and we will find out. And I want to remind everyone that Jazz Jennings was 17. <sighs> That's about all I can take for today. Thank you so much for sticking with me through all of this sand dumb. I've been Red Mom, out here in the garden, doing feminism from a materialist perspective with you.
Women, conservatives are not your friends. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.